Hello Riven mains and Yasuo mains alike. I'm the Nightwing, Way of Life Esports. I'm going to do my Hickums live for you guys for the knockout stage. So people tend to really, really like when I can do my Pickums live. Uh, I think that I have a decent amount of knowledge as when it comes to picking out certain teams to win. Over the course of years, I picked out the teams that have won world championships. I have picked out teams to beat teams that they were not supposed to beat. Uh, you can just all obviously uh, ask my friends in my back catalog, which is obviously very, very good and a good, a, a good, nice track record of that. Obviously, even even this year, people call me crazy when I said that G2 could beat SKT way back at MSI. So yeah, it's obviously pretty nuts how my pickums and how my mind uh, is able to uh, look at things a lot differently than a lot of people but sometimes I might obviously be wrong which is obviously gonna happen because I'm not perfect and that's just how life is so with the group stage wrapped up obviously uh, we look at North America failing EU succeeding that's just how it's gonna really work now looking at these quarterfinal matches these are all really really strong these are all really really interesting matches and it just Oh, so seems like fate that IG has to face the t face a top Korean seed in order to actually make semis just like they did last year. It it almost feels like it's deja vu. Or will we get an all LPL semifinal? Now, I'm going to be breaking down these individual matches uh, by themselves. But right now, in terms of having pickums. Right now, I'm going to look at all of these and go from... This is the more interesting side of the bracket. So what I'll do for these matches right here is that I'll wait. But I think I'll start with the bottom because this one has G2 and Damwon. And this one obviously has Splice and SKT. So in order for us to get a rematch of the 27, 2019... almost said 2017. 2019 MSI. We're going to need SKT to take down Splice. So let's just see where that's actually going to handle uh, that point. Now, maybe Splice are like Misfits way back in um, 2017 quarterfinals where they almost beat SKT. But the difference with this Splice roster and the difference between that Misfits roster is that that Misfits roster was arguably a lot better and most likely a lot better. And this Splice roster struggled against Unicorns of Love who also was a playing team not only that they almost struggled in a group with the easiest group in the tournament i know a lot of the eu fans are uh you know saying that all oh, eu's really really good and that's also true but splice weren't really good if you really look at how splice played yes they went 3-0 but the quality of that group was atrocious j team uh, collapsed gam sucked it's just they were not good and you can't say a, a good thing about their performance which was visible which was good at various moments but i'm not gonna forget that north scaring game where he was just running it down like come on guys like, like let, let's be honest here g2 and Fnatic got out of groups splice got an easy pass out of groups this is the same situation that h2k of 2016 uh, went through when people kept saying oh yeah they're a great western team no they weren't no they were not they were not good they were not good at all to a certain point they were good in europe they had a day where they were really good at world and people just went all crazy for that and i think that, and i think that in a, in a long period of time pe people will see this, this was not a great western team they're not going to upset skt uh, we obviously know that and we don't even really have to predict a lot for this matchup other than the fact that skt are going to 3-0 them there could be a world in which they do take take them to five games because obviously best of fives are a lot different than best of ones. That's just how the nature of that's going to play out. But I think that SKT are going to make semis. It's just highly, highly unlikely Splice will, will beat them. And I mean, to be fair, they really shouldn't be here anyway, if we're being completely honest here. But I know I'm going to get, obviously, a lot of hate comments saying, oh, well, you're just an NA bias. No, I'm not. I'm a logical thinker. And when you logically think about things, you see things a lot differently than a person who's just obviously looking at the results rather than how the results came. Looking at how the results came, they had an easy group. You cannot debate that at all. Cloud9 had a harder group than them. G2 had a harder group than them. SKT really did have a harder group than them. They didn't face, they faced literally one good team. That team was struggling. Then the other two were bad. 
So they're more, it's more a, a subtraction by addition in that scenario. If you want to break it down, there's no reason to break down matches. It's just SKT are going to win. Like, it, am I really going to sit here and break down why Faker is going to be better than Humanoid? Am I really going to sit here and better and break down why Khan is going to be better than Visichachi? Am I really going to debate why Clid is better than Xerxes? There's no reason to because the proof is right there, is in the pudding. So, Dan 1 versus G2. This is probably the most. This is probably the set first or second most interesting quarterfinal match because Damwon is very similar to G2 in a certain aspect because both teams play fairly similar. Really strong aggressive mid, really strong aggressive jungler, really strong aggressive top laner who can be stable, play tanks, but then still carry the game. You have literally two mid laners that can take over a game the snap of a Thanos finger, you have Canyon and Yankos, two junglers that, uh, well, Yankos have had, Yankos has had some struggles, but I think that best of fives will show G2 in a lot different light than best of ones have, I mean, this is the same team that lost to Fong Vu Buffalo, but then managed to win MSI, and I think people really, really say that Fong Vu Buffalo line a little too much, and that's not me being obviously a, you know, a fanboy of G2, which I uh, might be, but obviously, I think that people need to, need to understand that bad teams can have good matchups against good teams, it happens in sports, it happens in just anything, like, have you ever faced somebody in something, and they're visibly bad than you, but sometimes they just get the better of you, it happens, and it's not, it, it's Fong Vu Buffalo better than, um, uh, well, it's Fong Vu Buffalo better than SKT then because they can beat G2 in best of ones and SKT couldn't at MSI. No, it just means that certain teams just have good matchups against each other. Like, look at how random sometimes the LCS is or even the LEC is where that, like, Fnatic will be doing really, really well and then they'll just randomly lose to Rogue. It's just, like, sometimes bad teams can have, obviously, uh, good days against very good teams. It happens. But... In terms of Damwon, I think that they're going to lose based off their bot lane. I don't think that the group stage was a clear-cut indicator of how good their bot lane is. I think that was just an overperformance rather than them actually being that good. I feel as if G2 will most likely do something in the draft phase that is going to throw off Damwon. Damwon play more or less so just like G2 actually. They draft very similar to G2 in various various aspects, but I feel like it's going to be a super close back and forth best of five. I want five games out of the series, but I think G2 is going to take it to, to take it to damn one, and I feel like they're going to get their rematch, and SKT are going to get their revenge. Not, because it's not going to happen, and they're going to be obviously facing each other in the semifinals. Sorry, damn one, you're going out 3-2, but at least, hey, you fought really hard, though. Damn one is going to give G2 almost a run for their money. Almost a run for their money. So that's how it's going to actually happen. Splice is going to be 3 0 Let's not really do it. Let, 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 we can move on from that. I, I'm not debating a, a team as good as average as they are, weakest group in the tournament, be, beating Gam and J team, and beating FPX when their FPX were clearly choking. Like, come on. Like, let, let's think logically here about, about this, people. All right, so the most interesting side of the bracket, actually, I wouldn't really call this easier I mean, theoretically, this side is easy, but then that the splice kind of weighs it down. So, I mean, technically, by default, this is the harder bracket side, because looking at this, you you could get either, or even with with this side of the group, you can get an all Korean semifinal, or you could basically get an all EU semifinal. The chances of an all EU semifinal is just about the just about as unlikely as an all Korean semifinal, just given the fact that the nature of the teams. Now, looking at this, we could get an all. LPL semifinal, which would be lit. These teams know how to fight. These teams, like, just be clashing all day. FPX and IG, obviously, are going to have two different routes to get there. Now, we saw this last year with, with people predicting um, KT Rolster to beat IG, and I was one of the few people, you can ask my friends if I ever have on my channel, they, they, they know I picked IG. I picked IG to beat KT Rolster. Several reasons why. KT Rolster had this habit of choking. They were not, they were not really that good, if you really look at it. And also, I, get, I just don't trust KT Rolster. I'm, these, these are some more or less so surface level things that, that why I didn't trust KT Rolster. I thought IG um, obviously look more dominant and look stronger in their group. But this comes with the aspect of facing Griffin. Now, IG and Griffin had good days leading up to uh, this quarterfinal match. 
though it's hard to really see the gap in a lot of players because Chovy versus Rookie is going to be really good in a really interesting match. You have Sword facing off against the Shy. Man, that's a whoo, Nelly. That is a big discrepancy right there. I don't. People have this thing for Sword where he's like he's a good player. He's not really that good, honestly. People just say things about certain Korean players because they don't want to say they're bad because they just want to kind of just suck their own like you know what I mean. But you have to look at Tarzan versus um Tarzan versus Ning and Leanne. I mean that's pretty Tarzan favored. And then you look at the bot lanes with Jackie Love and Balan versus Viper and Lehan's pretty interesting bot like, this is a real this is another series that's going the distance man or or, or IG could 3-1 one them but Griffin I did not faith you in the group stage but you know you, you it, I don't know was that just an overperformance of that day or are they this good and you never know about best of fives with Griffin and I'm not just gonna say they're gonna win this best of five because they've never won a best of five technically uh and where when, when it really mattered well, technically, beating a Freak of Freaks summer 20, 2018 of summer does count. But we've only really ever won two best of fives. The Afrika one, where that's when they face KT in the finals. Or you um, count their entry best of fives into the LCK. So, you know, my boy Rookie is the dream destroyer, the dream killer. I'm going to pick IG. And then you get Fun Plus Phoenix versus Fnatic. Probably the spiciest quarterfinal match, if you're being completely honest. Now, the issue with Fnatic comes with the issue with Fun Plus Phoenix. Both teams were choking. And I, and I know people say Fnatic were sick and all this other stuff. I mean, yes, cl clearly so. They could have been sick. And I'm not saying they weren't. But looking at their day three performance where relying on another team to make a mistake to win, relying on clutch just being that bad to the to point to the point where you get that really fourth back they they could have theoretically not made groups if clutch beat them twice and it was very very possible. Let's 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 be honest here. The bot lane can have carry performances, but all those things that are Fnatic's problems are FPX's problems. Literally the exact same thing. Um players choking um, top lane are getting caught out constantly. They have a really tough game against J team in which they lose. You know, they actually did lose to one of the bad teams. That's really sad. Then you also have a thing where they lose to um, certain map pressure in terms of how the draft affects them. And I think that the same thing happens for Fnatic. A lot, both teams have the same exact things going on as to why they obviously. Um, are going to have a problem with each other because I feel like these conflicting styles are something that really is going to be a problem for both teams. Now, if you look at Fnatic's past, they have taken down one Chinese team. They've only really ever taken down one Chinese team that's not named RNG right now because I'm counting the the best of fives in Worlds, not really the random best of one match we just got you know a few days ago. But they've only really ever beaten EDG in quarterfinals. And FPX is a lot different than EDG. So, at this point of this best of five, I, I think if you want to say FPX can win, then I would agree with that. Because I just don't think that overall Fnatic is strong enough to really hold them off in terms of aggression. We saw how, how much they clapped the teams in their group. They did lose to Splice, obviously. So that poses the problem. Are EU teams just in Kryptonite to LPL teams? I like it's it's weird. You don't want to count out both of them. You really don't want to count out both of them because if you count out both of them, then you're basically just discrediting everything and only factoring in week two. But you can't just do that because you have to factor in their whole performance and their whole group stage. It it was up and down. Like I understand both teams had a really good week two, but are we just gonna forget week one? We're not doing that. We don't. At least on my channel, we don't do that here. I I know some people like the fanboy over a lot of teams, and you and we don't do that over here. We we have to factor in the whole shape of the pie. This is the whole shape of the pie. Both teams were wildly inconsistent, and the issue is that. Who's going to show up better? The question is, who just shows up better on the day? That's what it comes down to, is that... I think... Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Mm. It's... Oh, man, this is a tough one, man. This is super... This is really tough, honestly, guys. Oh, my God. It's... There's... there's every team across the board, except the SKT one, is just 
wildly evenly matched. And do you think that Fnatic are, are going to get their rematch against IG from last year's 2018 World Finals? Or do you think FPX can continue their streak from summer with beating IG? And IG can possibly take the revenge against FPX. Oh, man, it's so, it's so crazy. But Fnatic do have the experience in best of fives more than FPX. I feel like in a higher pre pre pressure situation, we can see Fnatic overperform as they've done before. Though, it is interesting to say that they've lost quarterfinals before in 2013 to Royal Club and in 2017 to RNG. It's possible. I'm going to say Fnatic, and I want my rematch of the 2018 World Finals. Let's get Fnatic some revenge. They're not going to beat IG again. They're not going to beat IG in, at all, but let's just see. Let, I think I'm, I'm settled with this. Now, I really can't predict for semifinals because the issue is... Oh, it's crazy because we, we, we haven't seen them play, so it's really hard to say semifinals because this is more or less all the random pick. Um, so let's go. If IG were to face Fnatic... The same issues pose Fnatic that, that, that posed them last year. IG is too fast. Fnatic like to play too methodical. There is points where Fnatic like to play fast. There are drafts where it literally tells them if you don't play fast, you lose. Now, is that Fnatic being fast or is that just the draft doing that? That's something you have to count in. Also, IG has shown just another level of finally coming back to form. The Shy is back to form. I feel like how strong Fnatic got after getting out of the group of death, isn't going to really overcome IG this time. And I'm going to say IG is going to beat them again. But it's going to be closer than last time. It's going to be 3-2. I, I, I'm giving Fnatic some games here. They're going to get. They're gonna almost get them. But Nemesis' experience and Nemesis against Rookie is too big a gap, man. I, I, I just can't do it. Uh, G2 vs. SKT, the rematch of uh, 2019 MSI. Now, this is high. All these semifinals are literally hypothetical. These are literally hypothetical because we haven't seen the teams play since group stage and we're basically picking it off of semifinal picks. Like, ay, ay, ay. So, more or less so, you have to um, get a big point where you're predicting how strong both teams are. I do feel like as though G2 can overcome S S SKT again, though we haven't seen them play, so... It's more or less so, like, this is literally just going off randomness. But whatever, G2 are going to face IG in the final. And then I'm going to pick G2 for my 2019 World Championship. Yes, the, they were clearly one of, one, of, one of the best League of Legends teams all year, uh, despite having a little bit of hiccups here and there. And they're going to win World 2019s. Hold on. Uh, select the winners of each pack. Each, um, see, I, that, that's the thing, though. This account that's the knockout stage, so I don't want to not put in my semifinal picks and then obviously um, not have them registered. So this is obviously what I did last year. I was, oh God, I put Cloud9 winning Worlds last year over IG in the final. Oh my God. <laughs> but I think that G2 will be the 2019 World Championship. I think that they're just a clinically really strong best of five team that a lot of people are still sleeping on. They have really good players, really good Western players for, their, for our standard. But I think that they're going to have to get past IG to do it. And what better way to be a world champion than to conquer your, your demon in IG, a team they are literally 0-5 against. So let, let's get G2 their 2019 World Championship trophy. So, and also hashtag G2 Army. So yeah, see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe, most of all, enjoy. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed my my pick'em my pick'em's knockout stage live reaction live picks. I don't know how to really say this in an I'll think of a video title. Obviously, but see you guys later. Who are you guys gonna pick for your um, knockout stage round? Like, like I said before, the semifinal one is literally basing it off of because you have to choose them before, otherwise you're you're gonna you're not gonna have a chance. Other than that, these are obviously well methodically thought out from my own personal opinion. But if this were to happen, I do genuinely feel IG is just the better team, just like they were last year. And eventually, I'm gonna make a make a video talking about why Fnatic stood no chance against the 2018. Uh, and Victus Gaming, and obviously uh, G2 already conquered SKT, so to theoretically think about it, it's not improbable that they would overcome SKT again, and sorry Faker, not getting that third Worlds, man, you're not getting it, not, not while I got G2 right here, see you later guys, bye, have a good day, and I'll see you guys in my next video. We Hi you guys, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more stuff.